Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac. It looks like a vanilla Isaac run. It smells like a vanilla Isaac run. That is kind of gross. I don't know. I don't want to know what Isaac's vanilla runs smell like. Uh, the Empress card is pretty good though. If they smell like that, that would smell like sweet ass cash. In any case, it is not necessarily a vanilla Isaac run. You've uh, probably remembered that I've had a few problems getting the Spider Mod Universal Item Pools thing to work. I think I figured it out. I think I'm actually just a dummy. And hey, in our first item room, we have the Relic. That seems to me to indicate that uh, Universal Item Pools is working. In case you're just joining us uh, after, you know, or within the past like 20 or 30 episodes, Universal Items Pool or Item Pools is a modifier which allows us, there's probably not another reroll on this floor, eh? so I should just figure, or finish this up. Um, Universal Item Pools allows us to get any item from any possible pool, regardless of the normal restrictions that apply. So we can get Deal with the Devil items from the shop, we can get shop items from Deal with the Angel, etc, etc. So basically, you know, all rooms are created equal up to this point. You know what? I am actually going to use the Empress card in this fight. The reason behind that is because the Pony is not a difficult boss fight. That's so. Oh, I really thought I could make it out of there. Pony's not a difficult boss fight, but it is a difficult boss fight for the uh, the very first floor when all I've gotten is the relic, which is a great item, but doesn't necessarily help me too much when it comes to uh, killing enemies that are a little bit wily and a little bit uh, dangerous for myself as well. So we should be able to reroll the pony into absolutely anything here. It's not the worst spacebar item in the game, and sometimes it actually can be viable, in my opinion at least. But uh, I certainly think we'll be looking for something else here. You might be wondering why the pony dropped. Hey, we got cube of meat instead. That's actually better. Um, you might be wondering why the pony dropped if it's universal item pools. Well, the way that it works is actually uh, if there's a guaranteed payout for a room or for a boss, for example, uh, the pony's a good example of that. Another good example would be famine or something like that. A horseman of the apocalypse guaranteed to drop a cube of meat. Uh, then it's guaranteed to drop what it's guaranteed to drop, but then when you reroll it, it could be anything, assuming rerolls are actually viable. Okay, piercing shots. It's an item that I uh, enjoy a great deal. This is. The second time we've gotten piercing shots in like six videos, which means it's the most I've gotten piercing shots since like episode one. I still do think that this was the very first item that I picked up in Isaac, so I have a soft spot for it there. But also, I, I got a soft spot right here. That's maybe the worst kind of sexual harassment. Hey, I'm impotent! Wanna get down on this? Too bad! Anyway, um, we, uh, I don't know why I put on my Danny DeVito voice for that. And I don't know why my Danny DeVito voice is so bad and not representative of Danny DeVito's actual voice. But anyway. Oh god, I'm gonna take some more damage here, aren't I? Yep, okay, I almost got out of that scot-free, or, you know, scot half price, but, uh, scot half price sounds like the worst superhero from, like, a Midwest two-store local grocery chain ever. We have a reroll, so, actually, I botched this a little bit. I should have gone into the boss room earlier. The thing is, like, normally, I, I like doing these universal item pools runs because it kind of messes you up. It's like doing, you, you know, you're used to doing crossword puzzles to keep your brain active. It's like doing Sudoku, you know, you have to change your thought patterns a little bit and the, the strategies that you employ in order to stay fresh. And I think that works out, you know? Power lifters don't always train with power lifting. Sometimes they do uh, yoga or they do, you know, cardio or something like that. You know, it keeps the body balanced, keeps the mind balanced and helps you achieve uh, better overall results. So that's what I think the Universal Item Pool helps you do, is think a little bit more critically about how and when to use the D6, and as a result, I think it makes me a better player overall, plus it, it leads to some or leads to some crazy runs sometimes, which are always enjoyable for me. No deal with the devil. To be honest with you, that's fair, I didn't deserve one, and HP upgrades are usually very hard to come by in uh, Deals with the Devil, or sorry, not Deals with the Devil, but um, in uh, Universal Item Pool's runs, so I'm very happy to have gotten that one there. Now, uh, we're in a very, very good spot here. Normally, th like, the thing that's weird is that, uh, the tier list for items, so or the tier list for rooms, I should say, sort of changes when you're doing universal item pools. Deals with the Devil are no longer, like, high tier, they're actually low tier, because you have to trade health for items that you could otherwise get. Now, there may still be situations where they're useful, but, uh, you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Please be a bombs or key. Ah, oh, it's not so bad. I am going to use my key to open up this golden chest, because I'm a bad dude that isn't afraid of anything. It's another Empress card, uh, and I still have the version of the game that apparently allows uh, two uh, rooms to, or two waves to spawn at once, which is really frustrating, but, you know, just one spirit heart down the drain, not the end of the world, unless I end up dying, in which case it, it sort of is the end of our little new world here, at least. Um, not to, you know, accidentally break into Aladdin and Jasmine's uh, famous song from the movie Snow White, but uh, we're going to... Keep this going here. Two cents, no keys, two bombs. I will look for the secret room. There's a small chance I can maybe get something worthwhile in the shop if this is the best secret room of all time. Uh, yeah, I could bomb my way in. 
Uh, well, you know, I'm gonna bomb my way into the shop because at the very least, even if I can't buy an item, we got very lucky that there was money in both of those, but even if I can't buy an item, I might be able to buy a key, and that would make this all worthwhile, even though we spent a lot to get in here. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm alright with this. That's fine, then. So we'll leave, uh, you know, we could have handled things a little bit better, but overall, I think that last little strategic move helped us out a lot there. And that is cool with me. So, leaving the cellar part one, we have piercing shots and HP upgrade. Uh, one key, D6, and the relic. The relic is going to be fantastic for us. Uh, ideally, I would like to start stacking up spirit hearts as soon as possible, but I uh, haven't done a very good job of not getting hit, so hopefully I can rectify that in the near future. Oh, two keys dropping from one room. That is amazing. Poop, on the other hand, not so much. I, you know, people are going to... Some people are going to think that joke about... Ooh, technology too. Some people are going to think that joke about... Um, you know, a whole new world being from Snow White is funny, and some people are not going to realize that it's a joke, and they're going to be like, is this guy serious? He thinks that a, a whole new world is from Snow White instead of Aladdin. Uh, he even named the characters. How could he be so stupid? Yep, I am the, I'm the dumb one. Wow, it's, technology 2 maybe not as strong as I necessarily thought, and kind of nullifies piercing shots, but I'm wondering, because there's been like a very pro-Disney sentiment that's come about lately. When I was a kid, you know, Disney was in, I don't know if you'd call it the, the Silver Age or the Golden Age of Disney movies, but you know, the Lion King was was huge, and uh, I'm trying to think of what else. You know, Aladdin came out when I was a kid, and uh, like the Emperor's New Groove. I was a little bit older by that point, but anyway, there were a lot of like really great uh, Disney movies that came out that kind of defined the childhood for a lot of uh, people my age. But then Disney sort of seemed to fade away a little bit. You know, they started doing like The Fox and the Hound too. It's in the Disney Vault. Go get it before we burn all the copies and bury them in a New Mexico landfill. But they kind of seem to be pulling it back, and I don't watch, uh, oh, it's gonna hurt. Yep. I don't watch a whole lot of movies uh, aimed at that demographic. That's not to say they're bad. Oftentimes, they're way better than movies that are aimed at my actual demographic. We'll take our second key of meteor, by the way. But I really, like, I've been hearing things non-stop about Frozen. It's just Frozen that, yo, let it go, let it go, all the time. I knew maybe I should go see this movie. Apparently, it's very good. But then, of course, now by the time this video actually comes out, it'll be like two weeks after I've made these comments, and we'll probably be in the midst of the Frozen backlash, where people are sick of hearing about it, and all of a sudden, I'm gonna sound like a like an idiot. But anyway, that's my perception on things. That's cool, man! I like when... People always get down on kids' movies when they get a little bit older. The way I see life is like... The first, like, 11, 12, 13 years of your life varies for different people. It's okay to be a kid. You like kid things, you like kids' movies, you, you know, your favorite meal is like an ice cream sundae. Well, like I said, we'll pick this up and we will check out our deal with the devil, if there's anything amazing in here. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, I'll pay one heart for a, a full suite of orbitals. I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, you know, 0 to, zero to 11, 0 to 12, 0 to 13, it's okay to be a kid like kid things. Then like 13 to 25? It becomes, like, super uncool to like kid things, and that's when, you know, people were like, Justin Bieber, man, fuck Justin, uh, maybe people that are a little bit older when they still enjoy Justin Bieber, but anyway, they're like, man, that stuff's for babies, I don't like that stuff, I'm way too cool for that, I only like things that real adults would like, anyway. And then I think once you get over 25, it's okay to be sort of into that stuff again. Not that it's never not okay, but you kind of grow up a little bit and you're like, yeah, just because this is aimed at kids doesn't necessarily mean I can't enjoy it as well. Like, the classic Pixar film is a great example. I avoided seeing... I'm just going to check out the cursed room. Ooh, and the secret room's right there. A little scary from a health perspective. Please, please, please. Okay. Um, I avoided seeing uh, Ratatouille and Wally for a long time because I was like, man, uh, I don't like that. I have to go back and get that Empress. Well, I don't have to, but I should. Ah, maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, I avoided seeing, you know, Ratatouille and uh, Wally for a long time because I was like, those movies are for kids. I don't want to see those. Then I saw them when I was like 22, and I was like, actually, this is really good. This has got a good message in here for everybody. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, don't worry about it so much. Expand your horizons. And, uh, you know, if something's good for kids, it can still be good for adults as well. Like, I'm very interested to see the Lego movie. I have no nostalgia for Lego. In fact, I'm a terrible builder when it comes to everything. When we ask Kate when we put together IKEA furniture, uh, she is like Bob the Builder, and I'm like, you know, Bill the Watcher, the less publicized dude without a TV show because he just sits on his ass. Because she makes me not help because I help in a destructive way. Like, I, I do more poorly, more harm than good. Um, it's a shame I couldn't buy that HP upgrade in that shop, by the way. But we're going to continue going downwards here. But um, yeah, I mean, just say, people say it's good. People my age say it's good. Kids seem to like it. I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me. I don't really know what I'm getting at here, but you know, it's kind of cool. The coolest thing is to respect good media, regardless of the age group it's, it's aimed at, if that makes sense. 
that's my philosophy on things. Like, I was watching the Dice Talks, you know, Dice is the video game, like, pseudo-convention type. It's more of a business-related convention, I guess, than, like, PAX or something like that. But anyway, um, and this guy was showing off these toy cars, and I, I forget what it was called now, and that's disappointing because I would, it would be nice if you could go look it up. But basically, it's like a slot car track, but, uh, you control the cars, the, like, the, the cars drive AI-controlled, but then you play, like, Mario Kart on your smartphone, and you could be like, okay, I want to hit my friend's car with a missile launcher, and then you tap the button and shoot it now, and then their car might spin out, and you pass them, and everybody in the chat was like, I would never buy this, and I'm like, of course you would never buy this, but that's really cool for people that are, uh, you can't reroll little Chad, fuck. Um, that's really cool for people that are a little bit younger than you, I think, like, if I was... 14, I would be like, I would never spend my hard-earned money on that, but if I was like a 25-year-old father of two children or something like that, which I am not, uh, but that's okay, um, I would be like, yeah, dude, my kids would be totally into that. I don't know. I think the internet has a big issue with being unable to reconcile the fact that some media are not aimed exactly at the demographic of, like, cynical 15 to 30-year-olds, which is a demographic I very much put myself in, by the way. But, um, yeah, anyway, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. It's been a pretty uneventful floor and a half in The Binding of Isaac, and that's why I'm kind of going off on these tangents, because that's fun to do, right? I have a good time with that. I like to strike a, an interesting balance between, you know, gameplay commentary and, uh, like, ill-advised social commentary that is unwarranted and perhaps valueless, but funny nonetheless. Uh, we're, we're having an okay run. The major problem right now is that uh, our damage is just pretty poor, and that's a, oh, lucky me. Uh, that's just a result of having Technology 2, which is a, a damage decrease, if I remember correctly. We're gonna pick up Book of Belial, and then pop it. Here's here's me being creative. We're gonna pick it up, pop it, and then re-roll it right away, and get Lemon Mishap. But that was my way of getting extra damage for this Mob Trap room, while also, um, being able to get the, the charge from this room, and being able to re-roll Book of Belial. We have to fight both bosses at once, because I used the book, uh, as enemies were spawning, which was a really stupid thing for me to do, because I know that that is a known issue, but, uh, oh well. What's done is done. Monster 2 apparently invincible, so, uh, that's how this is gonna end, I suppose. Is- is he really invincible? I should- I should have picked up, uh, Lemon Mishap and then tried to use it on him as well. No big deal, though. Uh, and I did open up the shop as well, so I'm hoping that we can pick up some extra money and maybe reroll or buy the ladder. Uh, it depends what we want to reroll most. Right now, our number one reroll priority is obviously the boss trap room, because it could give us anything. Book of Belial was a tempting item to take, but on Universal Item Pool's run, I, uh, I really, really enjoy having the D6. Sorry for that extended, really. I wasn't trying to do that for dramatic effect. I just had to put my brain on autopilot for a second while I figured out if I could actually dodge the shots that were coming at me. So this is gonna be the end of this floor. We're only gonna have one more reroll available. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Lemon Mishap being maybe the worst space bar item in the game, and already something I own. Oh shit, can I still get into the boss trap room now that I've taken some extra health? Interesting. You know, actually, let's reroll Bob's Rotten Head, because we're here anyway, right? It doesn't really matter. Oh, Mr. Boom, also terrible. Um, I could look for the secret room with Mr. Boom, but it doesn't really matter, because I'm gonna actually go play the shit out of the Blood Bank. So sadly, we're gonna get, like, no good items here, unless we get the HP plus speed upgrade, but the general truth about Universal Item Pool's runs seems to be that if you just kind of hold out long enough, you'll eventually get some items that will allow you to succeed one way or the other. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but hopefully we will be in the future. Now, again, remember what I said earlier, if something's guaranteed to pay out with, uh, X item, it will pay out with that item and then you can reroll it. So, we would be guaranteed to get either IV bag or blood bag from our blood bank here. And now, uh, of course, yes, there is, um, the possibility for me to go by the ladder if I wanted to, but ladder doesn't really strike me as my, uh, my favorite, uh, shop item. I would rather have the opportunity to maybe get something else later, especially given how many uh, potential items can show up in the shop. So, what I'm gonna do here is try to win some red hearts, and we'll use these red hearts to gamble a little bit more, get a little bit more money, but really, really, I need that HP, and I need that speed. Not necessarily the speed so much, but the HP is uh, kind of a desperate thing for me to have, and if it could pay out sooner rather than later, I would be thrilled. Uh, that's a nickel that's actually pretty good. That will allow us to play these a little bit more, and because we don't have 50 cents, I'm not so angry about the time that I'm spending in here. Oftentimes the shop can become a little bit tedious the longer you spend in here, but that's okay. We're gonna be fine. Really wanted to win keys there as well, as I saw that the Three Skull Man had a chance. Okay, you can pay out with like two whole hearts? Hey, Okay, well another Spirit Heart is actually really good, but I would have preferred the Red Heart just for the extra chance here, but that's okay. The more Red Hearts that, that drop, the better our life becomes here. Fly Love not necessarily thrilled about the prospect of... 
The longer you don't pay out with Fly Love, the longer, uh, or the better my chances of actually getting an item that I could desire here. And the shop music seems so loud to me. I don't know why. Not shop, sorry. The uh, arcade music seems so loud to me. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Oh, okay, fuck you. Um, we're gonna check in on our secret room here. We get more money, probably. Yeah, six cents. I hate doing this just to gamble it away on the shop, but, uh, ooh, that's important. I, I hate doing this just to gamble this away on the arcade, sorry. Anything where money's involved is apparently a shop in my head. It's kind of a shop, we exchange money for the possibility of getting goods. The only difference is that it's variable as, as opposed to more or less guaranteed. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, getting an HP upgrade would be huge for us. I gave one away to get a, a full suite of orbitals. Might be a little bit of a short-sighted decision because orbitals show up, you know, many ways. Pills, uh... Well, other cubes of meat. I guess we already have one cube of meat. Oh, okay, I got back to full health. That's actually really good. We're gonna get many more plays here. Which will allow us to keep the kind of ruse up a little bit longer. Again, I, I apologize if you're one of the people that's like me that hates watching this gambling uh, extravaganza over and over and over. But by the same token, it's also, you know, necessary, basically, in order to uh, give us a chance, a greater chance of success. And it really does give you a greater chance of success. I can't overestimate or can't overstate, I should say, how useful gambling can be and how integral this has been. This and saving tarot cards and good pills uh, until they're absolutely warranted has really basically, like, probably doubled the amount of times that I win in Isaac, which is a weird thing to say. Because you wouldn't expect that it would be that important. Uh, yeah, we're in a weird spot here. I, I almost want to gamble spirit hearts away, but... Oh, okay, we got one penny back. Let's put it back in the slot machine. Okay. I almost want to gamble the spirit hearts away a little bit for a chance, but I think it's kind of a dumb decision. We'll see if maybe we get anything out of this guy. Eh, we got more bombs. I think we just blow up the blood bank and leave, unfortunately. Yep, as usual, it pays out with some extra health, but there's no way I could have leveraged that against it. So, I'd say this is not the best floor that we've had. We got little Chad, uh, passed up two item rooms and didn't buy anything in the shop. So we got little Chad, basically. That's what we got from that floor. And we threw a whole bunch of money away. That's not good. Um, and the fact that we're on Necropolis now scares the shit out of me. But I do still have the Relic. Relic's a, a crazy good item as we begin to approach, you know, the, the late game and beyond, hopefully. I hate massive infamy. Oh, if I do... Someone suggested a really good idea for a top 10, and that would be like top 10 most annoying enemies in the Binding of Isaac. Massive Infamy, I'd like to pull the curtain back, will be number one if I do that. There's just nothing else that even comes close to the, like, ridiculous aggravation that those guys cause me. Now, we have keys, we have the D6, uh, we need to make something happen. Luckily, those are the only two necessary ingredients for most of these rooms. But, uh, we, we really need to, uh, leverage our existing value into something that, uh, helps us out here. And you know what? I probably will open up this golden... Ooh, that was really close. Uh, I probably will open up this golden chest. I think it's a smart idea. You may disagree, but uh, the value in getting one reroll pedestal even is enormous at this point. Only one of these dudes remaining. Uh, sure, another half heart. We trade a bomb and a key for this. Please be worth it. In some ways it is, and in many ways it probably isn't. But we did get, we got not awful compensation out of it. It wasn't like we traded, you know, Wayne Gretzky away for a, a bag of hockey pucks or something like that. That is probably the most Canadian reference I've ever made. Um, except, you know, it's not like we traded away our double-double for a Nunavut beach house, eh? Anyway, I don't know why I went so hard on my Canadian accent there. I could probably just, you know, let my uh, natural predilection kind of shine through there. But, oh well. Um... I don't even know what I'm talking about. Trading a Tim Hortons double-double for a Nunavut beach house. Truth be told, uh, any house anywhere in the world is probably more valuable than a, you know, coffee from a basically discount coffee chain. Uh, but there's there's probably not that many beaches in Nunavut. I don't know. I've never been to Nunavut. You know, there's this huge part of Canada that nobody... Or not, I shouldn't say nobody, that's really offensive, but that very few people relative to the rest of the country live in or have visited. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to do that. I'd, I'd romanticize a bit the Canadian North. And similarly, like Alaska, I would love to go to Alaska and be like, whoa, I, I hear Alaska's really beautiful. Obviously, the reputation that it has is that it's super cold and uh, 
you know, obviously that is warranted to some extent, but it also looks naturally beautiful. The thing that holds me back is that I know as soon as I got there, I'd be like, I just want to be on my computer. And that's sad, but also honest. <laughs> I, like, oh, it's beautiful, whatever. Let's get a, just a Google image search it next time. I'm just going to stay at home instead. It's the kind of person I am, and it's sad, but it's also, again, uh, accurate. So that's why I, you know, when I go on vacations, I go on vacations to places that are fairly wired and, you know, people I want to meet. Not necessarily, I don't visit places I want to see, I visit people I want to meet. Because I value those relationships more than, you know, the natural geographical beauty of a place. And that's okay, too, if you're like, I want to go to Iceland and see, uh, you know, the volcanoes and, and bitchin'-ass waterfalls and Game of Thrones-esque, you know, like, farscapes. That's freaking cool, man! Iceland is actually very gorgeous and maybe one of the few places uh, I've been to on Earth where I was very much struck by the natural beauty and I would totally go back again, if only for that reason, but there's many other reasons. Uh, but, you know, more power to you if, you if you are the kind of person that's into that. I'm not, I'm just not. I'm the kind of person who, if I'm being honest with myself, is like, a vacation for me is not working, but still being at home. And that's it. Those people get judged too, I want to point that out there. Those people get judged a lot. People are like, what'd you do on your vacation? Well, you know, I uh, just kind of stayed at home and relaxed, and the people are always like, oh. And that oh always means like, wow, you're really boring. But fuck you, man, if you work 52 weeks a year, or, you know, 48 weeks a year, and you want to take your vacation wherever you see fit, you should have the opportunity to do so without being judged. That's my opinion on things. I'm going to pick up Scapular because we're getting close to the end of this floor. That's probably not going to save me too much, but sure, whatever. Uh, we're not really putting up a great case for this being a staggeringly important run, or a run where we have a good chance of victory. And that's disappointing. But, again, there there is the chance that we could succeed. You know, I, I now that I think about it, I kind of wish that I didn't pick up the uh, Halo of Flies and that deal with the devil. Not just because it's maybe not the best price, or not as good of a price as I originally thought. Uh, oh god, just stay away from these guys. Um, but also because... It minimizes or perhaps even nullifies our odds of getting a deal with the angel, which would give me a free item. And, you know, the deal with the angel is one of those rooms that suffers, kind of like the deal with the devil, uh, from universal item pools because it means that, uh, you know, the normally really stacked item pool is not necessarily as, you know, chock full of good items. But that's okay because it's still a free item room and that would be really, really useful. Um, but instead, I chose to pay health for a decent item, maybe even a good item, maybe even a great item to be honest with you, but a quietly great one. Uh, and that might have ruined my chances of getting uh, a few free items in the future, so a little bit disappointing. Technology 2 is seriously like, it has really hampered my damage output here. I almost wish that I just stuck with piercing tears, but it's very hard, it's a very hard thing for me to get used to to say like, oh, I wish I didn't have technology 2 because it's normally so good. Or, well, you know, in my head at least I think it's so good. Like, you might be saying, well, at least you have it so you can fight these Zambros, but truth be told, you can still kill uh, the zombies very easily with piercing shots, uh, just using the same ammo, basically. Uh, and the same ammo, obviously. Well, actually, it's totally different ammo, my mistake, because obviously we're shooting a laser beam now instead of our own sadness. Concentrated drops of our own sadness. This describes every time I've ever masturbated. Uh, we are not in a very good position, and I think that's pretty obvious by this point. Uh, we're doing okay on health, largely as a result of these spirit hearts. How many fucking Mask of Infamy rooms can there be on one floor? And look at the, the efforts and the heights I have to go to in order to kill one of these fucking hearts is like, is staggering. A Forrest Gumpian level of uh, engagement necessary. Should, yeah, there we go, we toss a bomb down. Oh, it got all three. I am the lord of the fucking dance. Okay, who are we fighting? The Fallen, it's not so bad. It's also not so good. I mean, it's, if you look at the damage that I'm doing, it's great because technology does like nothing, but then there's a big boost every time, uh, oh, careful. Every time uh, my tears hit and blue, or not blue baby, but second level Meat Boy's tears hit. I find that so fucking funny. That, uh, like, we're relying on second level cube of meat to do probably the majority of damage in these fights. Or at least, like, a very significant percentage of it. Now, we are gonna get a deal with the devil item to start with here, I think. Uh, and then I could re-roll it if it's bad, but I have to keep in mind that re-rolling it will probably open me up to universal item pools. So it might be best to take a half-decent deal with the devil item. Okay, Mom's Contact is actually amazing. Uh, and what do we have in here? I'm kinda, I was hoping for Krampus. I guess we re-roll these. Neither of those are, are worth the, uh, what little remaining health we have. 
But mom's contact is crazy important. We're on Necropolis 2 again, which means, unfortunately, uh, many, many more... Uh, many, many more uh, massive infamy, probably. Now, our damage is still real bad, but as a result of mom's contact plus technology... You know, remember, mom's contact, I think, has a percentage chance to freeze uh, based on, like, the number of... Or based on, like, per hit, if that makes sense. Uh, which is fantastic with technology, because technology fires, like, four or five times a second. So it's very feasible uh, to keep an enemy frozen, basically indefinitely. So frozen that he didn't even know he was dead there. That's fucked up. That's some, like, Hitchcockian shit right there. Um, Tales from the Crypt. I know Hitchcock didn't do Tales from the Crypt, but anyway. The, even though this isn't an objective damage increase, it's gonna drastically impact uh, our offensive capabilities, which is beautiful. Book of Sin, on the other hand, not gonna drastically impact anything except the size of what I leave in the toilet after this video is done. I guess I'm implying that I'm gonna be so angry that I'm gonna shit more. Doesn't really make any sense, but it would be a great name for a British noble. I don't like this, uh, and I don't like this because, you know, obviously taking lard gives us a massive speed decrease, but we need the HP. Hopefully we can gain the ability to fly. Speed upgrades are not hard to come by, um, but the, the HP is, is necessary. Now, we are real effing slow. The thing that's good about this, I shouldn't go there yet. The thing that's good about this is that, or at least not as bad about this, is that we have the ability to freeze our enemies and, you know, the expectation that enemies will be frozen very quickly. Meaning, uh, I shouldn't have to dodge as much, but if I do, I'm in a rough spot. Let's put it that way. Uh, but again, as you can see here, like, basically this is like, I, I can freeze time and just kill enemies at my own leisure. Uh, if they're ready to die, beautiful. If they're not ready to die, too bad. I'm gonna force them. Let's see what we've got in our shop. Uh, 9 volt is a purchase, absolutely. I kind of hate doing it because... Uh, I do want to buy the key as well, but I also want to play this Judgment. I kind of hate doing it, and the, you know, the reason I hate doing it is that I, I wanted to play that Judgment, but 9 volt is probably going to be more valuable for us. Please don't lose, like, all of your spirit hearts in this room. Ah, uh, there we go. I've got to come up with a new tactic. It's a tactic I don't think I've ever used in Isaac. But if I'm ever being chased by those heads, I just freeze them, and then... You know, as a result, I guess we got a good chance to test it here. Uh, as a result of freezing them, I can get away. I didn't do it perfectly there, but you can see how this strategy will work in the future. Now, if we could just find some way to not only, you know, deal with the freezing, but also increase the damage of... Oh god, oh god, I'm, I'm choking. Uh, there we go. Increase the damage of our shots, I would love it. Uh, I guess I glitched out the game, so we'll use a bomb to kill him. Luckily I have them. Oh, there we go, it freed him from his prison. Okay, just freeze the mask, and then go for the heart. That's actually a crazy good strategy. Okay, bomb here may find a secret room. Oh, somebody up there likes me, and we get the small rock. We're gonna be real freaking slow, but I have to pick up the small rock. It's, it's a damage increase, and that's exactly what I need. The speed might end up being a major problem, but I do think that it borderline had to be done. So, I don't know. We're really gonna hope that we get the, uh... The blood bag, on the bright side, it should make it, yeah, very easy to walk through those spikes without getting hit. Come on, you know you want to pay out with, like, a speed upgrade. We'll see. It, it just pay out with anything and I'll be happy. That's a money bag. Uh, we're gonna reroll that into portable slot, which is terrible, but that's fine. We'll get some chances to reroll. I am, of course, hoping that there is a... Well, many things. I'm hoping that there's an arcade. The arcade, we can maybe get an HP plus speed upgrade, which is really uh, the best of both worlds for us right now. Uh, but additionally, I would love it if there was an arcade and we can get two more free items. I am going to go a little ballsy here, and this is very dangerous, but uh, I think it's the right idea. Uh, I don't need the money so much, although I could buy a key from the shop or another spirit heart from that shop, which would be pretty useful, and probably a red heart now that I look at the amount of money that we'll get from this blood bank. Uh, but I really need speed, otherwise I'm going to die, so I think it's not the worst idea for me to invest as much health as possible as I can into this. Also, this will allow me to go to the boss trap room, which is the other huge benefit of this. Now, I fully expect to not get hit at all against Chubb here. Chubb may not even get a chance to move much beyond his initial starting position, and that would be very nice. So this room is very huge from a health standpoint. We got keys, we got spirit hearts, we got red hearts. That's very good. And we're continuing to move onwards again, just in case there's a library or something. There's a curse room. I can justify going to the curse room, even though it's gonna do damage. If only I could have gotten to the door earlier there. It's a shot speed upgrade with a tarot card. I reroll it into Able. You know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, unfortunately. That's not, uh, it's not superb, it's not terrible. I rerolled it and that cost me the reroll that I would have used on uh, Portable Slot, which is actually kind of stupid of me. Oh well, what's done is done. 
Okay, so now we pray that the blood bag comes out in the next two plays. It oh shit, okay. It feels like I'm, I'm probably still slower than my base speed, but it feels like I'm walking on sunshine right now. Unfortunately, as a result of this, I can no longer go to the boss trap room, but I don't, I, you know, it's impossible for me to feel bad about it. We got a damage increase, a health increase, and didn't suffer crazily from a speed perspective here. Um, our card is the Hermit, and actually the Hermit's a useful card. Not in the future, but we can use this to possibly get a deal with the Devil after the mom fight. We won't be able to reroll anything, and it'll be a long walk back, but, uh, you know, I, I, this is potentially where things turn around. This floor might have been huge for us. Uh, just by virtue of getting the small rock, lard, and the blood bag, we've uh, drastically improved ourselves. And let's see if we're capable of taking on Mom. You know, Blue Mom is, is difficult, Mom, but um, if we can keep the enemies frozen, and maybe even the foot frozen, which I guess just doesn't work, uh, then our life is going to be a lot easier. And especially, you know, if we can just kill most of the enemies before they come out, that's very, very good. And I think we're actually going to be able to do that as a result of having Technology 2 plus Mom's contacts. So. Oh, the only problem is when there's multiple enemies, that does make things a little bit more difficult, especially after uh, I refuse to hit one for whatever reason. There we go, get him frozen, take him out. Spiders, no big deal, especially when mom kills them for me. That came across as a little bit too mama's boy for me, but that's okay. Now, so far so good, again. I guess you just can't freeze the foot, or when it gets frozen, it doesn't stay frozen for very long. Oh, 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 okay, we're good. Oh, I got caught in the explosion, but that's okay. So we get an HP upgrade, which again is a pretty rare thing to show up after the, uh, or after a boss room on, uh, on Universal Item Pools run. So after that, we teleport out and we hope that we're gonna be able to snag something useful here. I realize there's lots of gambling opportunities. You know, rest assured, this run is already gonna be slow as we continue through the rest of the game. There's no need to slow it down any further. Unless it's absolutely necessary, in which case, sure, by all means, but, uh, for now, I'm a-okay to just continue onwards, I think. No deal with the devil, that's fine. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's Womb XL. 50% positive, 50% negative. I'm actually, like, I feel like I'm playing a much more strategically competitive game than, uh, than Isaac right now. Because now I actually have, like, I almost feel like I'm playing a fighting game. You know, like, a deal with this enemy, or not a fighting game, maybe like a beat-em-up. Like, uh, you know, freeze this enemy, keep him locked down while I focus the other enemies. It's, it's almost like playing Dota or something like that. Like, okay, just stun him, knock him out of the fight, and then, you know, that, that's how it feels right now. Because of my fairly reliable freeze ability here. And you know what? More tiers upgrades, or any tiers upgrades, would probably increase the uh, efficacy of the, uh, of Mom's Contact as well. I think that was bad dodging for me. You know, it should go without saying, this is not a one run. In fact, we're still in what I would consider to be probably a losing position, uh, but certainly it's actually feasible with our items now that we could win relative to before when we were uh, just kind of running out the clock until we eventually died. So uh, we'll continue trying to find the boss rooms here. No deal with the devil possible. Well, you know, unless we got a teleportation pill or card, which is, you know, potentially something that could happen, but not something I'm 100% concerned with right now, more concerned with just uh, getting our last remaining item for now until the chest uh, if we even make it there and you know what we have a very good uh, counter for blue baby and Isaac that that much should kind of go without saying but yes uh, we, we could easily end up taking out those bosses if the uh, the kind of crowd gets controlled easily enough more bombs is great uh, it's an arcade uh, it's again of course tempting because another blood bag would really help me out with my speed issue but we can't really justify it, unfortunately. Please get into a place where you're easy to hit. Oh, that'll do it. Okay, now that you're frozen, bomb for a bomb is actually a very good deal. I probably could have put that bomb in a better place, but it's a good deal because we get the opportunity to uh, possibly snag a tinted rock, a hidden tinted rock there. Mostly, I guess what I'm trying to do is keep my spirit hearts alive as we continue to run the gamut here. Uh... Okay, I'm just trying- Oh, no, 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 okay! F be freezing that guy almost actually got me into trouble there. And we could very easily on this run get a little bit down thinking uh, about all the things we don't have. We don't have the ability to fly. We do have a lot of health. We don't have a lot of damage. Uh, we do have a full suite of orbitals. I don't know, I don't, where am I going with this? What I'm trying to say is like, I don't know. We, we don't have good rate of fire. We don't have, uh, actually we do have good rate of fire, but we, we don't have any increased rate of fire. Um, we don't have fantastic damage, we're slow, and um, it's, it's 
fairly plausible that I could find myself dying on this run. But I prefer to focus on the positive on a run like this. How fun of a combination is Technology 2 plus Mom's Contact? Kind of thing that, you know, I guess literally could happen uh, on a non-Universal Item Pools run, but is most likely to happen on a Universal Item Pools run, I guess, just because of the insanity of getting that combination of items. So I, this is why I like Universal Item Pools. And this is not as overpowered of a run, or, or even close to it, as uh, most runs with this parameter actually get. So it's also a little bit more balanced, and I appreciate that, I like that. Uh, another Spirit Heart is great. If we can somehow manage to take these into the Isaac fight, I'd, I'd be thrilled. But I honestly think that, you know, to be honest with you, the Isaac fight is probably the easiest thing we're gonna encounter. Uh, the Blue Baby fight's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Blast Assist freaking the F out as a result of this combination, but, um... Blue Baby's gonna be a little bit harder because it summons more enemies, although, the, to be fair, those enemies should die very, very quickly. Speed up, speed up. Bad gas, sorry, I should've known. Because that is apparently the most common pill that ever shows up. Uh, ooh, oh, I froze him, okay. Yeah, I don't know, it's gonna be fun. Uh, the, the Blue Baby fight could be tricky, but really I'm, I'm worried about the, uh, the rooms that come prior to the, the late game boss fights. I really think that if we get to the late game boss fights with a decent amount of health even, we should be totally fine. But that's the hard part, is actually making it through the rooms that are prior to them without the, you know, staggering amount of health that I would otherwise love to have. But, this floor went pretty well, we actually gained some extra health, uh, which is not the norm, probably, it depends on the quality and, you know, items that you've gotten. Uh, we're fighting Teratoma, which is basically an ideal boss to fight when you have essentially piercing shots and the ability to freeze enemies. That didn't stop me from taking damage, but, you know, we, we should be able to basically shut down uh, anything else that Teratoma is able to do here. The real problem is that the spiders, if they spawn from a frozen Teratoma, don't spawn frozen, which makes sense, it must be warm inside, at least. Uh, we get the Steam Sale, which is the easiest reroll of all time, into an HP upgrade, so I'm very pleased with that. Alright, Mom's Heart is next. I, yep, I, I was gonna say I fully expect to take damage at least once here, uh, just because it's basically impossible for me. Uh, ooh, I'm just, apologies for the stunted commentary, I'm just trying to keep things, like, reasonably working here. I think you put, oh, it's still frozen. Oh no, there's still an enemy, I didn't see you. That was weird. Uh, I'm gonna put the bomb down and not shoot, and the reason for that, I, I shot that time and, you know, completely went against what I was gonna say, but uh, the reason for that is that Abel shoots the bombs back at me, which is very scary. Uh, but, you know, that's very easy, as you can see. Mostly I want to make sure that we do get the bombs working from a crowd control standpoint. Uh, but then, uh, I don't know what I've done here. But then we want to make sure, of course, that we've frozen Mom's heart as well. Might want to save some bombs, I guess, but we're closing in on the permanent bomb part of this fight, which is gonna be very, very easy for me. Because, uh, you know, she might summon, like, another enemy, but she might not. She might just remain frozen forever because of the, uh, you know, odds and probability of us actually freezing here with each individual shot. So, this is probably the easiest Mom's Heart fight in a long time, even though it's taken a little bit longer. Uh, and that's saying something, because Mom's Heart is typically a very, very easy fight. So, up to the next floor. Uh, this is where things are gonna get a little bit more interesting. Good chain reaction. Oh! Yes, okay. Lucky me. And we got spirit hearts, and we got a pill. Please tell me this is a speed upgrade. It's a bad trip. So we lost a spirit heart. We gained a spirit heart on that room, though, so I feel pretty okay about that overall. Um, again, major problem with this fight from our standpoint, and the only problem with this fight from our standpoint is that, uh, you know, when the uh, fistula parts explode, they don't explode frozen. They explode at full speed, so we gotta stay pretty far back, which, fortunately for us, is not something that's very difficult to do as a result of having essentially infinite range. Now, if we could just get the right direction here w without spending forever, I would be really, really pleased. Should uh, watch out for these, et uh, not eternal hearts, but uh, neutral flies. Not really neutral, are they? They're actually pretty dead set against me. Can't really afford to open that, given that I place a lot of our chances for success, or the onus for a lot of our chance for success in the future, on actually open opening uh, as many chest items as possible. Or items on the chest, I should say, because that technically was a chest item. It was an item in a chest, but it wasn't on the chest, if you know what I mean. And I'm entertaining this idea that, you know, the Isaac fight might be kind of similar to the room we have going on right now, where basically he gets a chance to shoot once every now and then, but for the most part, we're able to uh, just keep him consistently locked down. And uh, I'm just focusing on the one Loki here. The other Loki did manage to get away. But if... Oh! There I go. Now I've done it. Oh, oh, just blow up one of the bomb. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Okay, so now we've taken out 
Uh, the bomb flies, and Loki should be in a more difficult spot. Don't, uh, if I could actually freeze this bomb fly right next to that Loki, which is exactly what happened, that would be amazing. This is not as easy as I thought, and this is kind of very representative of the fact that we're doing so little damage and it's very frustrating. But, uh, it's also representative of the fact that even though our damage is low, we've managed to, you know, finagle an item combination that makes it feasible for us to survive and thrive even, regardless of that. So there's a bomb, let's go fight our boss. And it's actually possible that I might be able to play the Blood Bank here, which is very surprising to me. So, so far so good. Even with the full suite of orbitals, I doubt I would get hit very often against Isaac like this. The real problem for me is going to be when the Angel Fetus is spawn, uh, and also, you know, keeping my focus up as I just hold down the left uh, arrow key here for what is going to seem like an awful long time. So it turns out, Technology 2 plus Mom's Contact is a, a very, very nice combination for, you know, kind of a defensive, offensive focus person. Uh, he is not frozen anymore, I've noticed. The problem is, if he does become unfrozen, uh, he's gonna shoot out like 10 shots a second as a result of the fact that we're hitting him 10 times a second. Uh, but that's why, you know, there's just more added, uh, reason to keep him constantly locked down whenever possible. More onus on us, if you will, in order to, uh, you know, constantly keep him under the cover of ice here. I need to insert several Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes from, uh, Batman and Robin here in order to feel appropriate. So we should be entering the third phase soon. I expect that's where things are gonna get difficult. And again, you know, it depends what we get on the uh, chest, but it's it's theoretically possible, as you can see, that with only maybe three hearts, we could feel really confident going into that blue baby fight that we could still come out with a victory. So I'm just hoping that the angel fetuses find it in their uh, hearts to kind of like wander into the uh, the place where I'm shooting here. The line of fire, that's what I was thinking. I almost said rate of fire like 10 times. Uh, at least I didn't say Reign of Fire, that Matthew McConaughey, Christian Bale movie about, you know, dragons, which is actually not that bad, I think. But I saw when I was like 14 and, you know, easily impressed by things that I thought were super badass. Anyway, we're almost done with... Oh, okay, we're almost done with this Isaac fight. I think maybe he's dead, but he's frozen, so he doesn't know he's dead? It's, it's weird. Okay, now he's for real dead. That's cool. This angel feed is also deceased. We got hit a few more times than I would have liked, but we can also take an offensive spacebar item here if we want to. Uh, okay, so these are all pretty bad, but we're in a weird situation where I don't want to use, I don't want to reroll them yet, and I'll explain why, because it's going to seem a little funky. Uh, like, normally you want to reroll as much as possible as fast as possible, but I'm going to save my reroll until I actually need to use the PhD, because the PhD is also a, uh, it's a full health item, essentially, or at least a lot of health, so if I ever get low on the way to the blue baby boss fight, using the PhD as full health may be better than any item that we could possibly hope to get on a reroll, except for Polyphemus, which would be, you know, incredible, of course. But, you know, we still have a chance for more items, so we just get more keys. I'd almost dodge directly into that like a big dumb anus. Anus onus, that's the title for this run if I wasn't already going to call it Frozen because it's appropriate and we talked about it, but anyway, let's kick this back. Oh! Able, a little bit of a, a funky monkey there. We got a lot of good stuff on that room. Triple Loki is kind of annoying, but we'll, we'll th throw some bombs down just so he jumped out of the way of that bomb at the last second. Why would we throw bombs down against Loki? Sometimes, me, I swear. I don't know what you're thinking. Doesn't really make any sense, does it? Considering, you know, Loki spawns a shit ton of bomb flies by himself. Now, if these guys could just... How did you teleport without moving? If these guys could just stay in, like, roughly the same lane as one another, that would be, you know, very good for me. Oh, dodge out of the way of that one. Again, damage, uh, very much a sore spot for me here, but this Loki should be dead. Oh, come up, get this guy. One of these Lokis has to die. Yeah, okay, there, oh, you, what, I don't even know how to hit you there. Why can't I hit you? Uh, come on. Jesus Christ, you're a freaking Casper the Friendly Ghost here, how am I supposed to get you? You should be dead, like, a hundred times over, by the way. No wonder this has been such a long run. Uh, our card is the Devil. It's a very good card to take into this boss fight. I think if you combine the, um, the Devil card with the fact that, uh, we have basically a full health pill coming, uh, in the form of PhD, we have a very good chance for success on this run. I should kill Gluttony last. Or Sloth last, actually. We'll see. We'll let nature sort it out. We'll, we'll fire at them at the same time and see. Who, uh, Isaac decides is gonna die first. Okay, by killing Sloth last, we get another tarot card. Tarot card is the Empress, also very good. I don't know which one's better. Hey, we're on our boss room. You know what? At this point, 
it kind of is risking giving up a near guarantee. Okay, first what I'm gonna do is pop the Empress on this room because we still have a Devil card that we can take into the boss fight. Um, but it's kind of risking a guaranteed win, but I think in the interest of not just steamrolling the boss, since I have the opportunity to be a little bit more fair, what I will do, and I know I threw the last run by doing something similar, although that time it was by accident, this time it's on purpose for real. I'll go back, I'll take, no, I'm not gonna take PhD, but I'll go back and I'll reroll all three of those items just to see if we get anything, because if I, you know, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. It's actually the best decision to reroll all of these. Never mind, I was being, like, overly self-righteous for no reason there. Disregard that. Uh, the rerolls give me Parasite. I don't even know if that's gonna work. The ability to fly, a little, little bit too late. Uh, many people will probably be arguing that Forget Me Now would be a lot of fun, but it's a stupid choice because I don't have any keys, so, you know, I can just fight the boss twice, I guess. Yeah, there's some value in that being funny, I guess. Alright. Devil card. So we're just gonna hold the button down, and after Blue Baby gets frozen, we should be pretty much good. Oh my god, okay. We really need to make sure that he stays uh, frozen in Carbonite like Han Solo here. I mean, I guess Han Solo doesn't stay frozen in Carbonite. Spoilers again, my mistake. I guess we can just kind of stand still here. <laughs> I really thought this would be a little bit more harrowing than it actually is, but oh, there's one hit. We could end up in trouble here, but there's nothing I could have done with that PhD that would have made it better, actually. Like, it, what I was ho thinking, not hoping necessarily, but what I was thinking was that I could use PhD if I get hurt a lot prior to the boss room and then go into the boss room with full health as a result of it. And, you know, a full health indicator or, you know, getter, pill, consumable, tarot card, or PhD uh, is substantially more valuable than the vast majority of items we could probably pick up uh, at this point of the game. At least that's the way I see it. Uh, this is gonna be over. It was a little bit scarier than I thought. We, we lost more health here than we did against Isaac, I think, but it's done regardless. That was a really fun run. As always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to show your support by clicking the like button, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more Isaac. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye!